Hi there, this is Tom the Bear Whisperer, and this is part two of Tom doing a little reminiscing about his dad. Uh, today would have been his birthday. Uh, he passed away about 14 years ago. Um, and I said this in the other one, but I'll just recap and then move along. Uh, he liked to drink as whiskey. He drank Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, or Wild Turkey. He liked it with water. Dad drank it. I tried to mix it close to how he would do it. This is as close as actually I have to a short highball glass. That's real close. But anyway, um, got an ice cube phobia. I said in the other one, so that, that's basically a shot of water frozen. That's that's my ice cube, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> had to make my own, and then it's a shot and a half of whiskey. Now, Dad never measured; he just poured. But for the sake of me drinking, I'm going to measure, and then I put about a shot of water in, which is about how he would have mixed it. It was always whiskey and water for Dad. Oh wow! It's actually not bad. A lot smoother than I expected it to be. I usually don't drink Jack Daniels. Uh, that was a Dad drank only beer, and he drank. Uh, uh, bourbon uh, or sour mashes in this case is like I said he only drank those three things usually uh, Jack Daniels Jim Beam or uh, Wild Turkey um, Dad was one of these all in drinkers I mean he was all in he had if he had one beer he had ten if he had one drink he you know he had half a fifth that was the kind of drinker he was and truth is, if uh, if it wasn't for my lovely wife, I probably would have ended up in that direction. Uh, but at some point, I, I decided to, uh, you know, uh, go a different direction. And, and I still drink, obviously, uh, and I really enjoy drinking, but I've kind of tempered how I drink. Uh, I rarely go for that all-in moment, although it does happen occasionally. Uh but Dad would truly be baffled about how I drink beer. He would see me drink a, a two or three a pints on a on a weekend, and then stopping or doing my videos. It would really, uh, well, he would. I mean, I would be the source of ridicule. Ridicule. He would make fun of me to no end if he saw these videos that I do, or if he saw me drink a shot and eat. And then not drink any more whiskey and have a couple beers after that. He he would seriously make fun of me for that kind of drinking. And if any of my family members watch this, they'll 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 agree with me. Uh, I would seriously be the source of ridicule. Oh, he was an interesting guy. Uh, he was born in 1922. He was in World War II and Korea. Um, Received a Bronze Star, which he never talked about. In fact, I probably wouldn't have ever known about it if uh, uh, some of his uh, buddies that I, I met later uh, hadn't told me about it, because it's not something he talked about. I think that's the difference between guys today and, and that generation. You, see, you know, you see license plates of people bragging about their service. Uh, you don't usually see that from World War II veterans. It's not something that they, they talk about. I think it's a different generation. You know, I think people today need that pat on the back for some reason, you know. Uh, dad's generation wasn't that pat on the back generation. They went out and did their job. They didn't have to have people thanking them every day for what they did, uh, although people should thank them. Uh, but but it, I think that the need to be thanked uh, would irritate Dad. If he would saw what was going on today, he would seriously be frustrated. Oh, uh, look at that. Uh, yeah, actually, this glass, uh, if it didn't have Sam Adams or that brown derby, <laughs> you would think it was just a short highball glass, which is basically what it is. I got this at a beer tasting a while back uh, that brown derby sponsored. But, I mean, this, this is basically what a short highball glass looked like back in the day. And for you youngsters watching this, well, that's what you'd call a drink like this, a highball. It was kind of a general term, you know, for a... Uh, well, general, if it, if it was a one one liquor and one mixer, it was a highball. Dad was one of those guys that everybody knew too. I mean, there were bars strung all over the place that that knew him extremely well, and he knew people from everywhere. From a lot of it was work. He ran a catering business as, as when I was a kid, so. He knew people from, from all sorts of different businesses. 
So, uh, I mean, he, he, we can, some, we'd go almost anywhere and somebody would know him for, for something for some reason. It was just like that. Uh, I had long hair as a kid. used to drive him absolutely batshit crazy. If you can imagine, you know, World War II, but I had hair, you know, way past across my head. But it was it was down, you know, way all over my shoulder at one point. He used to drive him nuts, and I was riding with him one day. And I was working at the time, so it, it didn't, you know, bother him as much anymore, because I was working. But anyway, um, we were we were driving, and this kid pulled up in this uh, Baja Bug. I had this green mohawk, and he looked at that kid, and he looked back at me, and he looked at that kid, and he looked back at me, and he says, Oh, hell, it ain't that bad. And that had that really raspy voice like that. He said, Oh, hell, it ain't that bad. Uh, <laughs> that's how we said things. My sex talk when I was about 14 was, we were all we were sitting talking at the kitchen table, and he just got up and left. Didn't say anything, just left. Was gone for about 15 minutes of the... Uh, the uh, uh, drugstore wasn't far from our house. Uh, came back about 15 minutes, had a paper bag about like that, dropped it in front of me on the kitchen table, said, use them, and walked away. And that was my sex talk. <laughs> the bag was full of reverence. I think I still had a handful of them by the time I met my wife. I didn't get laid very often. <laughs> I was practically a virgin when we met. I mean, look at this face. This face, you know. You, you don't get laid very often looking like this. <laughs> this is interesting. Actually, uh, it's funny. During that, I drank a first class, and I was getting a whole lot of sweetness. And now I'm drinking this, and I'm getting a whole lot of smoky. As it sits in there in the water and the ice. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I don't know what the, a lot of today's... Uh, the hip bourbon drinkers would, would cringe at drinking it this way. This is how a lot of them drank back then. Ice wasn't necessarily no no. Dad wasn't one of those guys though. He would he would frown on, on bars that fill your glass up with ice and put your whiskey. No, he liked about two two or three cubes. And then the then is then then the the liquor, and then the water on top. It was usually pretty close to about a 50-50 mix for it. With the, you know, the bigger side going to the whiskey. Usually, you know, if there was a bigger side, if it wasn't exactly, if it was 60-40, it was 60 weeks, you know. You put the ice in, you fill it up with whiskey, then you have you know, a little water on top. You know, a lot of places, you know, give you this glass full of ice, and, you know, he, now he wouldn't go for that. It was usually just a couple, three cubes is how we like it. Mm. Oh, wow. I've talked about it when I've had only, uh, you know, a, a Labor Day or Veterans Day or, you know, uh, other occasions when he comes to mind. Uh, but I hadn't done the whiskey yet like this. So I thought, well, let me just get a small bottle. So I don't want to be committed <laughs> to a big bottle of Jack Daniels. Like I said, I'd rather I'd rather buy a bottle of Four Roses, to be honest with you. Um, uh, but I wanted to do this. Uh, yeah, I tell you a great whiskey that I think Dad would really like right now, though. Is it, uh, uh, the Jim Beam Devil's Cut. The Devil's Cut is just brilliant. Uh, it's a little big for some. Uh, you know, the, the the story around whiskey is what's evaporated is the angel share. What gets absorbed into the wood is the devil's cut. And what Jim Beam has done is they've got a system where they draw a certain amount of that whiskey back out, and then they blend it with some other whiskeys. And it's a very interesting. It's it's very uh, it's very woody as as you would imagine. Has a lot of character. So it's it's a little much for some folks. But if you want that big woody bourbon, it is nice, man. At some point, I'm going to buy me a bottle because Sam's has it for a reasonable price, and I'm going to do a video for it because I really like it. Uh, it's better than a lot of whiskeys at, at two or even three times the price. It really is. And there you go. Uh, well, there you go, Dad. Uh,
this is the only way, Pop, <laughs> that I can get through a whole bottle. I know you could have got through a whole, a whole big bottle <laughs> in an evening. But this is this is all I could do. So even at my best, I, there's no way I could drink what you did. So anyway, hey, thank you all for listening to me. This is Tommy Brewers for Have a Good Evening.